Okay, the next segment is about semantic parsing. So semantic parsing is about converting natural language to a logical form. For example, to build executable code for specific applications such as an airline reservation or a geographical query system. So semantic parsing has three stages. The first is to take the input, for example, a sentence, and convert it into a syntactic parse tree using syntactic analysis, and then perform semantic analysis to come up with a semantic representation. So what is compositional semantics? Well, this is done by adding uh, semantic attachments to context-free grammar rules. So we first parse the sentence syntactically and then associate semantics to each of the individual words and then use the context-free grammar and the semantic attachments to build uh, semantic uh, representations of all the non-terminal nodes. Uh, and at the end of the day, we get the semantics of the full sentence, which is associated with the root of the parse tree. So here's an example. The sentence is, Javier likes pizza. And what we want to produce as output is a, a predicate of this form in first order logic, like or likes, Javier, first argument, pizza, second argument. So here's how we can do this. We associate a semantic expression with each of the nodes. So Javier, likes, and pizza are the leaf nodes. Each of them is represented as itself, in this case as a noun, uh, not a noun, and, and then a lambda expression. So here's where lambda expressions come in handy. Uh, what we want to represent here is that the verb likes gets represented as the lambda expression of two arguments, x and y, that turns them into the predicate likes with the two arguments. So now the next thing is to combine uh, this node with the node for pizza. And now we are going to turn the two uh, argument lambda expression into a single argument lambda expression. So we're going to have uh, one of the variables bound y to pizza, and we only have one unbound variable. So we have a lambda expression only for x. Now we're still missing one argument. So if we combine the two remaining uncombined nodes, Javier and uh, the lambda expression for the verb phrase, we're going to get the semantics of the entire sentence by applying the remaining unbound lambda expression to Javier, and we're going to get the predicate for the sentence, which is likes Javier pizza. So for practical purposes, uh, a lot of the recent work on semantic parsing has been using uh, a combinatorial categorical grammar, uh, which was introduced by Mark Steedman in 1996. So let me give you some examples of how CCG is used to represent semantics. Uh, for example, adjectives are represented as lambda expressions on one variable. So we have lambda x, tall x. So this is the expression that represents the adjective tall. And now we have a, a transformation rule that say s backslash np forward slash adjective. So this is essentially one of the constituents in uh, CCGs which corresponds to uh, a lambda expression with a function f and uh, a, an argument x. And then np noun phrase, so in this example I'm going to use uh, the name of a basketball player, Yao Ming. So the noun phrases get represented as themselves. If we want to represent the sentence Yao Ming is tall in uh, CCG, here's how we can do it. We uh, start with the words themselves. Yao Ming is labeled as a noun phrase, To is an adjective, and is is S and P adjective. That gets translated into CCG, into a lambda expression, one for the function and one for the attribute. Now we can combine those two together and get an expression that requires a noun phrase on the left to form a sentence. And then we can combine those together with a noun phrase and get the expression that Yao Ming is To. So now, uh, in relation to this uh, exercise, we have a problem from NACLO 2014 from Jonathan Kummerfeld, Aleka Blackwell, and Patrick Littell. It's available on the NACLO website, and it has two parts. One is the generic CCG part, and the second one is uh, specific to uh, uh, language. So uh, the first part introduces CCG, expanding the meaning of the forward and backward slashes. And then uh, it gives a little grammar uh, using four words. And then shows how to combine uh, different expressions uh, to form grammatical parses. And also gives some examples of ungrammatical parses. 
So the first part of the problem asks the following three questions. One is uh, to explain how CCG works to parse sentences. Number two is to take the sentence, I enjoy long books. You have to figure, be able to figure out how to uh, parse the sentence successfully with the grammar. And finally, in part three, it asks you, given a specific grammar, uh, to come up with sentences that cannot be parsed using this grammar. Why don't you think about the answers to those three questions and then look at the answer on the next slide. So here we have the answers to the first three parts of uh, the first problem on CCG from NACLA. And now the second part, it has to do with a language called Tok Pisin from uh, New Guinea. Uh, there are some sentences in that language and a scrambled list of English translations. You have to figure out first of all how to match each of the English sentences to the Tok Pisin uh, sentences. And then in the second part, you have to translate one sentence from one of the languages into the other and vice versa. And then in the final part, you have to figure out how to map the different words in that uh, language to uh, the different uh, CCG categories on the right-hand side. So think about it and look at the answer in the next slide. Okay, so after you've had fun with this uh, uh, nice uh, NACLO problem. We're going to look at a few more examples of recent work on uh, semantic parsing. Uh, the first one is uh, a system called GeoQuery, which is one of the earliest semantic parsing systems by Zelle and Mooney from 1996. Uh, it was used to parse uh, and semantically represent uh, questions about uh, geographical uh, data. So, for example, it took questions like, what is the capital of the state with the largest population? And what are the major cities in Kansas? And it was able to represent them in the in first order logic format. Uh, so here are some of the statements that it was able to translate. So C is a capital city, uh, X is major, P is a place, the capital of S is C, uh, B traverses S, and so on. Okay, now let's switch from this older paper to a more recent one by Luke Zettelmore and Mike Collins from 2005. In that paper, they use uh, CCG for semantic parsing, again, in a domain that involves uh, geographical questions. You can define Utah as a noun phrase, Idaho as a noun phrase, and borders is something that takes one noun phrase on the left and one on the right to form a sentence. And here are some of the representations that they end up with. What states border Texas? Again, this is a lambda expression. Uh, where x, uh, single variable x, x has to be a state and x has to border Texas. What is the largest state? Again, it's a lambda expression for x, where x is a state, and uh, we're computing the size of x, and we want to find uh, the value of this statement that maximizes the size. And the final example, what states border the state that borders the most states? Again, can be represented in a much more convoluted way using two lambda functions, one for state and one for another type of state. So here's how you can do the derivations. So Utah borders Idaho and what states border Texas. Uh, you should take a look at the derivations and understand how the output in uh, lambda format is produced using the uh, CCG uh, derivation. Here's some more snapshots from this paper. So those are some of the items that were learned in the system. And this is the entire grammar. So this concludes the section on semantic parsing.